right, guys, I think this is take 10 on this video. <laughs> I just keep having interruptions, but you know what? We're going to try it again. Eventually, I'm going to get it right. For some reason, I keep hitting the wrong buttons, and I've got frizzy hair, and I just don't care. I'm going to look like the mad scientist before this video is over with, but I'm going to keep trying until eventually I get it right. I have learned about myself. I am not a very good multitasker. But anyway, we're going to start by graphing this inequality here. So I like to start by looking at the line um, y equals 4x minus 3. That's what I'm actually graphing is this line. So I go to my negative 3, and then I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. And I could also go down 4 and over 1 in this direction. And then I have to decide, do I want my line to be dashed or solid? And because it's equal to, it's equal to all these points on the line, we're going to include that. Now the next thing I have to decide is which side of my line to shade. And there's a couple ways that I look at this. I'm look, I kind of zero in on the y-intercept and I think y's less than this. All the y's beneath it are going to be less than this. So I end up shading everything on this side of my line. All of these points in the shaded region, in this purple shaded region, are true for my purple inequality. So now what we want to look at is the blue line. Another way that you can do the shading, by the way, is just pick out a point, like let's say this um, 4, 0, and plug it in. Let me do that real quick. 4, 0. So is 0 less than or equal to 4 times 4 minus 3? That's 16 take away 3, which is 13. Is 0 less than or equal to 13? Yes. So we know we want to shade the side that includes that point. Um, okay, so back to this line down here. I want this to be in slope-intercept form before I can graph it. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And when I divide both sides by a negative 2, remember the golden rule of inequality says I've got to flip that inequality symbol. So I have negative 1 half x is my equation here. So we're going to graph y equals a negative 1 half x. And if it's helpful to you, you can go ahead and put that plus 0. That doesn't change it. That just helps me visualize my y-intercept a little better. So there it is. I want to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And I keep on going. And I have to decide, do I want to include the points on this line or not? Now, it's not equal to, so we know that it should be a dashed line. Up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. So I'm going to put a dashed line here to show that this is the boundary, but I'm not including the points on this line. And then I need to decide, do I want to shade above or below it? So it's the y's less than negative 1 half x. So all the y's down here below it. Again, I could pick out a point and check it, plug it in and see. But then what we have to do is determine our feasible region. So when I'm looking at our feasible region, I'm looking at the area that ends up being shaded twice. So it's all of this area down here in this um, quadrilateral, I guess you could say. It's a, well, it's not really, I don't know what you would call a shape. It looks like a quadrilateral. It looks like it has four sides. But this is unbounded because it keeps on going down this way and it keeps on going down this way. And all of that area in that little corner there is going to be shaded. No matter how far down I go, it's all going to be shaded. So we say this is unbounded. The feasible region is unbounded because it keeps on going down forever and ever and ever. As this line goes down and this line goes down, that shaded area keeps on going down too. So again, these are my boundary lines. We're not including this boundary line. We are including this boundary line. And it's unbounded because this just keeps on going forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever down here. Okay, so let's look at another one. Um, maybe this one will be bounded so we can see the difference between unbounded and bounded. So let's begin with graphing this blue line. I'm going to pause the video and just graph the blue line. You can go ahead and get a piece of paper and try this as well. 
Okay, so I started off at positive 5, went down 4 over 3. I used a dash line for the boundary line because we're not including the values. And we're looking for y's less than, so I know I would shade below my line here. All right, so now let's do the green. Okay, so I started at negative 2. My slope is up 1 over 1. That's the number understood to be here in front of the x term. And I included the points on this because it is greater than or equal to. And so now for the shaded region, we know that we're going to want to shade everything above it. And last of all, we have the purple. X is greater than 1. And we're going to look at what would we do if x is equal to 1. Well, I know that that's a line here at x equals 1, but we're just looking at the values that are greater than x equals 1. It's going to be a vertical line here. And I made it dash because we're looking for the ones that are greater than it, not equal to it. So that's all of these things over here. So if we're thinking about what area got shaded twice, that's this little triangle here. This little feasible region right here is what got shaded not just twice, but three times. It's everything above the green line, everything below the blue line, everything to the right of the purple line. And that created this triangle. So this time we can see that our region is, the feasible region is bounded. It's bounded by the blue line, it's bounded by the green line, and bounded by the purple line. And it creates a triangle. But the thing to note is that not everything is a solution. The points on the blue line are not solutions on this line right here. The points on this purple line are not solutions. The ones on the green line are, but if I look at each vertex, the vertices of my triangle, none of those vertices would actually be included in the solution set because two of the three lines are dashed lines. So here it would be, it wouldn't be because it's on the purple dashed line and the blue dashed line, so it's not included. Here it would be included on the green, but it wouldn't be included on the blue, and here it would be included on the green, but not on the purple. So none of the vertexes are actually solutions, but there are still a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, infinitely many solutions here in this triangle, this triangular region. So if I was going to ask if the solution set of this bounded region is finite, the answer would be no, because there's an infinite amount of points in that little pink region. All of those little teeny tiny dots, those little um, half points, fourth of points, eighth of a point, 16, 32nd, we can keep on going. There's tons and tons and tons of little points in between here. All of those are solutions, so this is not a finite set of solutions in my fine in my feasible region. So anyway, I hope that helped. Um, hopefully, this video cleared things up a little bit about the difference between bounded. This is my bounded because it's all boxed in or triangled in, I guess. Um, but this is a bounded region, and this is unbounded because it just keeps on going down forever and ever. So hopefully that helped a little with the vocabulary. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to reach out and let me know.